Okay, so uh, it being on or about 6.30. Oh, hang on, there's a couple of chats here. Um, okay. Um, it's on or about 6.30. We're going to uh, start this uh, regular meeting of the Eastern Conservation Commission, um, bring it to order. Um, Please note that uh, this is a remote meeting using Zoom technology due to the state of emergency initiated March 12th by Governor Baker in response to the COVID-19 public health emergency. Um, it's being recorded audio and video. Um, applicants will be uh, given the ability to assume remote control of their hearings and uh, present material as they desire, or I can do it for them from the files. Um, please note on April 6th, the commission uh, delegated signature authority to Andrea Langhauser, environmental planner, assistant planning director for all decisions issued during the duration of the emergency. Now that that is out of the way, I'll find my agenda, we'll be okay. Um, first up is six Woodledge Road, this is a request for determination of applicability for construction of a pool, patio, and cabana. Cameron yeah. Larson is our um, project engineer for this project. I've promoted him to panelist. Hi, Cameron. Hi, hey, good evening, Commission. Um, yep, that's my name, Cameron Larson, with Environmental Consulting and Restoration, uh, here for tonight to present to you the RDA for Six Woodledge Lane. Um, the applicant for the project is Adam McNeil, the property owner who does reside at the property. Um, the site consists of a single family home with an associated driveway along the south side, um, decking to the rear, maintained lawn around the house, landscaped areas, um, typical of the area. Um, ECR completed a wetland delineation of the site. We located a bordering vegetated wetland along the north side of the property. Um, within the interior of the wetland system, there is an intermittent stream. We also located that in order to identify the 200 foot buffer off the intermittent stream. Um, it's not mapped <coughs> by USGS, but we did locate it during our field delineation. Um, so as you can see on the plan, we do show the 100 foot buffer off of the wetland line um, and the 200 foot off of the intermittent stream. Um, what we're proposing through this RDA is the construction of a in-ground pool, associated patio, uh, small cabana, retaining wall and fencing surrounding the pool. Um, we've located the pool to the Western side of the home um, to maximize the buffer between the uh, proposed work in the nearby wetland resource areas. Um, we've been able to maintain all the work outside of the 100 foot buffer to the BVW, um, but the work does fall within the outer 200 foot um, to the intermittent stream. Um, we'll be using uh, erosion controls, will be established prior to the start of work between the pool and the nearby resource areas. Um, any stockpiling will be outside the 100 foot buffer. We can keep that to the south side away from all. Um, you know, away from the wetland area, um, as well as access and dewatering can all be done to that south side um, as far as possible away from the wetland resource areas. Um, and then at the completion of the work, all disturbed areas surrounding the pool will be stabilized as lawn, which it currently exists now. Um, so just to summarize, it's a proposal for an in-ground pool outside the 100-foot buffer within the 200-foot riverfront um, all within a maintained lawn. Um, so tonight what we're seeking is a negative determination from the commission. And if you have any questions at this point, I'd be happy to address those. So the, the um, so I was out at the site on Saturday and um, it looks like some, um, some work has been done as far as uh, regrading and uh, clearing grade away from the house because that, that's the slopes to the house at that point. Do you have any feedback for me on when that began and under what circumstances? Um, my understanding of that, that was, um, there was a retaining wall there along that west side of the home that was recently removed um, prior to all this 
pool that got it, you know, prior to the development of this idea for the pool that got put in motion. Um, but yes, there was a little bit of work just to that west side of the home. There was a retaining wall all within a lawn area. So what the property owner had done was remove that wall. And um, as you notice, kind of graded it out and has now reseeded it to lawn. So um, that was that was completed recently prior to the start of this application. Okay. Anybody have any questions? If, sure. If Andrew. I could, if I could note the abutter notifications have been received and posted online. Carol. Yes. Thank you, um, Cameron. What is the slope of the existing lawn from the house to the? Uh, BVW? Um, it kind of, so the, the existing topo on the site, it kind of, um, it kind of crests up a little bit to the rear of the house and then slopes fairly steeply down. But between the proposed work um, and the BVW, um, it's actually kind of crests upward a little bit. So to be honest, all the, the where the proposed work is, it, the topo all kind of trends to the south away from the BBW. So we're not really expecting any threat of any type of erosion from the work area heading towards the wetlands, but we are going to install the silt sock anyways. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Anyone else? Any public comment for yes. six wood ledge? Yes, we had a neighbor. Okay. If I can, um, Exit. There we go. Uh, does a neighbor representing themselves as one? If if you'd like to talk, um, I'm going to give you that opportunity. Woodland. Johnson, do you have any come? Is there any uh, further discussion here from uh, the Johnsons? You can unmute yourself if you want or type something into the chat box. Or raise your hand. Or raise your hand. Just give them a couple seconds here to try and sort this out. Could be they just wanted to see what was going on too, so. Okay, so I think uh, Apple opportunity has been given to uh, these uh, um, abutters. So, um, anybody have a motion? Motion to issue a negative uh, request for determination, a negative determination of applicability for six wood ledge uh, lane um, with no uh, conditions. Speedy so second. Second. We'll give it to John. Okay. Uh, Thomas second. So uh, roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundin aye. Speedy aye. Thomas aye. Okay. Thanks, Cameron. All right. Great. Thank you very much, Commission. Point of clarification: This was not in state jurisdiction. I think you saw that in the in the report. Can I make right. that? Can I make that distinction? That's that's fine with the applicant. Yeah. Yeah, I, I noticed there was no DEP number even indicated, so I, I assumed it wasn't. So DEP doesn't give RDAs uh, numbers, yeah. so it's only in my recommendations you'd see that it wasn't within the state resource area. Okay, great. Okay, we're all set, Cameron. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, next up is uh, 50 Spooner Street. I'll bring up uh, Dan Colley, the architect. And I will bring up his engineer, Eric Wilhelm.
So um, just to the, to the rest of the commission here, before we uh, start and get uh, the um, applicants representatives uh, recognized, um, th this is a rather large project, which has very, a very small portion of it is jurisdictional. Um, so um, I, I'm sure that the representatives are fully prepared to give us a full blown presentation of what's going to happen here on this site with the development of this school, or we can get an abbreviated version uh, of such uh, a presentation um, and maybe focus in on what might be jurisdictional to um, our um, needs on this case. Um, you know, this is a very, very large uh, uh, project uh, over on uh, Spooner Street between Spooner and Lothrop. So um, any, any preference? I know my preference is the abbreviated version. So if we don't have any objections to that, I'm going to give that guidance to the uh, applicant. I agree. Okay. And I if couldn't... I can just add for Dan's uh, benefit, I have spoken to Eric and he has colorized pictures of the key site plans that are useful to us. So you can skip that information. Get yeah, I was only going to present the, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to give you a real brief overview. I don't, who yeah. has, uh, you have my slides, right, Andrea? Or do you want me to present my screen? I have them, but um, okay. I, I don't I know can which ones you want to present. Do you have them? I do. I suggest one, four, 10, and 15. Can you see? She, that's one? Yep. Okay. I can, and that's, that's the introduction slide. So that's the good evening, everyone slide. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't you guys, why, don't you, uh, why don't you introduce yourselves so that we know who you are? And... I'm Dan Colley, I'm the project manager from Perkins Eastman, we're the architectural firm. Okay. Uh, with me tonight is Eric Wilhelmson from CDW, is the civil engineer. He'll be speaking momentarily about his part, which is okay. of more interest to you guys. Um, so this is the overall site plan. Uh, the building is going to be built on the fields behind the existing Parkview School. Uh, we have a number of playgrounds. The building is a K to pre-K to two. Um, it's going to encompass all three schools. Will be combined into one school on this campus, and then we'll where the existing building is removed, will redevelop for new um, athletic fields to replace the ones that are lost from the construction project. Uh, there was also a portion of this project that worked on um, reorientation of the, of the circulation in this area because it's one of the major issues. And uh, this shows how we've accomplished some of that reorientation and um, working with some of the uh, overall issues. This one shows the vehicular circulation plan that we're proposing. Uh, basically, all the cars come in off a of spooner, make an immediate right, drive around the building and drop off at the front entrance. And buses come in off a of spooner as well, but they do not, they come in and go to the other side of the building where it's labeled bus loop. And the kids who come in on buses are dropped off in the front to completely separate bus and car traffic. That blue line running basically north south on the drawing. That's the uh, new proposed connection between Lothrop and Columbus Ave, which uh, we feel will significantly um, help with the uh, congestion on that campus currently. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, unless there, I mean, I can, you know, I could talk about it all night, so, but I don't wanna, go into anything that you're not interested in. This is, a, this is the parking, this is the Columbus Avenue tie-in and re, um, we're going to uh, redevelop the entire parking area in front of a middle school. Yep, I mean, I think that uh, that's given us the, uh, the perspective that we need as far as uh, where everything is in uh, relation to what the redevelopment is gonna do. So I think we're good.
Okay, um, I guess I will share my screen. Uh, Welcome, Eric. Let's start with this overall. I'm Eric Walmson with CDW Consultant. We've been doing the site design, grading, and drainage. So this is a you know much much less colorized version of, of the site, and as you can see, the existing school or the proposed school to be located behind the uh, the new school sort of clips into where the wetland is down in the southwest corner. And that wetland area is a, a stormwater area that's been used by the rest of the campus constructed sometime prior to, to 96. I guess there was a bit of it that may have already been a wetland when it was turned into a, a stormwater basin, but regardless now it's just a, a, a wetland. So this wetland area, it's stormwater basin, uh, has an outlet, it discharges across Lothrop or under, under Lothrop where it turns into this uh, intermediate stream. I'll switch to uh, the demo plan. This is a enlargement of this area under existing conditions. We have the wetlands in green, 50 foot buffer in yellow, 100 foot buffer in, in the pink, and this uh, bluer line is the uh, 200 foot offset from the intermediate uh, stream. We have the outline of the proposed school here. And just going through and showing all the, the items to be demoed, the construction entrance that will be built here in the vicinity of the existing walking path that's over there. There will also be another construction entrance built on the opposite end. I can just switch back to the overall briefly. So we have that construction entrance here, and there will be another one built here in, at the location of both of the new proposed driveways. We can't start with this one because it's a steep slope. So when, you know, we'll initially get access to the site for this construction entrance, but once this one is built, they'll have you know, more flexibility in getting into the site. Um, we'll have... Um, Hay bales, silt sacks, you know, at all the limit of the work and all downstream catch basins. Um, this little area here is an, an outdoor learning area that's on the landscape drawings. Um, and I guess let me go back to the overall, um, just so you get a sense of where this is. Down over here is the existing treatment plant. We are also proposing new force mains to, to run up the grass shoulder uh, up to Lothrop, cut across, and then back up into the existing uh, septic disposal field. The new force mains are going to replace this force main path, which is the existing one. Is the, the facility and the treatment plant operators have been having problems with the existing line. Uh, try to maintain it and get access to it to, to clean it out and whatnot. So we're doing the new line, new cleanouts, it's a much shorter, simpler route. Uh, switching to the grading and drainage proposed. We have the new north-south connecting road. Um, series of catch basins and water quality units, underground infiltration to deal with all the storm water. Um, maybe blow up uh, the wastewater treatment plant area. Again, this is the treatment plant. The force mains running up the side here, across Lothrop and then back into the site. We have hay bales again around all of this portion of it in, in the dark heavy dash line. Um, that's it in a nutshell. So can we just go to the, um, just so we have the, the landscape 
uh, plan for that area, the outdoor learning area? Yep. It's a, uh, like a granite stone dust path with um, some sort of um, log benches. This is the bed of wetland line here. Okay, so um, jurisdictional is, is a lot of construction work going on inside the buffer zone at this point. What's the closest um, that that limit of work comes to the, the wetlands? There you go. So this is where, this right here is probably the closest point. You know, just eyeballing it off of this, it's probably 40 feet. If, it, if this yellow line is the 50 foot. This is actually sloping down and away from the wetland area in this area. Mm -hmm. Great, it's dropping down to Lothrop. And there's a, an existing chain link fence that's there, correct? Yes. Uh, let me go back to the demo plan. Is, is that going to remain in place? It is being uh, moved a little bit. Uh, east, west? Uh, it's going to be closer to the wetland. This is the fence here. And this is our, you know, roach control barrier limit of work. So it does vary in its location. Eric, we, Eric, can I just ask the limit of work um, over at the outdoor uh, learning center doesn't look any closer than 40, but do you want to just verify that? That's the existing fence line there and it kind of slopes down. So from the wetland to where I have the erosion control barriers. Oops. That's 30 feet, Sorry. right right through here is about 30 feet. So in order to move that fence, you're gonna to have to uh, deal with removing vegetation, right? I mean, that's... I mean, on the other side of that fence, all along that fence, it's all vegetated right up to the wetland, you know, into the buffer zone there. Yep. It's going to have to be cleared, the fence moved, the road shifted over. Yep. Grading. So the pathway that's there now is about six feet wide. Is that correct? I think it's maybe eight. I think it's eight. Yeah. It is. Yep, it's about eight. And how wide is the, the roadway that's going to go in there? The road's going to be 24 feet wide. The, the walking path stays eight foot, feet wide, and there'll be a little two foot wide or so grass shoulder in between all of that. So we have the, let me zoom in here. This is the, the walking path, little grass shoulder, and then 24 feet driveway. So, I guess what's what what I'm I might be missing out of this is um, what is what is the offset here to the to the intrusion into the no disturb zone that's going to occur by offset you mean how is it being compensated how is it going to be compensated correct. So the the um, I'm, I'm Eric. I'm giving you a chance to think, but I'm putting it 
his his uh, conservation commission has a local 50 foot no disturb zone and the um both the both the um the 40 foot distance off the side of the road and the learning center fall within that i don't think it's something that the uh, engineers have compensated for so um you might want to they you might want to ask Dan to talk about his nature based playgrounds and his LED, um, his LED, his LEED certified um, school construction, which is going to be the first of, of its uh, kind here in Easton. I can. <laughs> um. One of the one of the ideas about the behind the school is for it to be as connected to nature as it possibly can be, and that's why that little that little classroom area is there. Um, that's a shiftable and malleable piece because it's not really it's really meant to kind of drive, bring the kids in to a more natural environment and to allow them to kind of really be more engrossed in when when they're learning. So that's really I mean obviously it can move if it has to move. It's not like it's it's not tied down to anything, but it seemed like that was a good spot to put it because it's right off that kind of main curve there of the drop off and they could go right down that sidewalk right across and right into that pathway. So that's the only reason why that landed there. Um, the building itself is is lead silver right now and possibly could be lead gold depending on how we do as far as energy conservation and our other measures. Um, it meets all the sustainable sites criteria that it can. And we're, um, we could look at the part, the playgrounds and how they're they're try to you know harken back to the community and harken back to the um, to the history of the town as well. So as you know, I, to, to give some perspective of of and I you know when I I was at the you know I've driven by that that wetland probably a thousand times in my life and. Um, mm -hmm. And I knew it was always a drainage basin of some sort, but having an opportunity to go by there and actually stop and look in there, um, there's water in there at this time of year. Um, uh, surprisingly, given the drought, uh, it, there's, there is actually water in there. Um, but the, uh, the wildlife was surprising to me. Um, it shouldn't have been because it's a, actually a little bit larger than when you drive by and you think about it um, uh, area than, than you might expect. Um, in, a, in the outdoor learning area for this age children to get them engaged in that nature is really a quite phenomenal. And so I think we sort of have to, to measure it against, do we keep them away from the wetland or do we keep them closer to it so that they can become engaged um, by those birds, especially the birds um, that are in there making an awful lot of noise. Um, it was really quite interesting to just sit there for a moment and try and be quiet um, to listen to them. So. Um, so I, you know, given that we're trying to, to create an outdoor space to, to do that, I, I'm more concerned about the construction of it than I am about the, the establishment of um, that area. It's, it's lawn where it is now, where it would go. So um, it's not like we're um, really creating a, a, a big disturbance. It's really just the construction of it. And that's part of my concern, even with the construction here, is, is to how to minimize disturbance of what we look at as a drainage basin, which is actually now a vibrant wetland. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of the reasons we put the classroom there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you we know, do, we can you know, tell well, that it was, and these kids benefit, this age group benefits tremendously from experiential learning. Yeah. That's they, really there. They learn by, they learn by playing and doing things and they, they don't, that's how they, so this is to us, this was like a really great opportunity. Well, uh, to add to that, um, as being you know, going through the school system here as a younger guy, uh, not too long ago, but um, we used that whole wetland to learn about when the little salamanders are in there. Sheep pastures mm -hmm. to come up and show us stuff. You know that that definitely molded me as who I am today and why I'm so interested in the outdoors. So, uh, yeah, I think it's definitely an important piece that we need to get back. You know, our students into that and seeing that down would be really good. So I guess. Um, um, 
you know, from my perspective, it's it's a you know bit of you know trade off there. You know, as far as having it as close to the wetlands as opposed to away, but considering that it's in already disturbed area where you're going to put it, I'm I'm okay as long as we're taking appropriate precautions in the construction of it that we're not you know getting any sort of damage into the wetland. Um, at that point, um, I, I think that that's also my concern um, over in the. Um, in the southern part of this as well as in um, is just protecting that as much as possible. Um, I mean, that, that's, you know, that that's my biggest concern here. So any other comments from other people? I have a question. Why, why do we even need the fence right now? Hmm. Yeah. Slope down into the retention basin. The retention basin has, um, engineered structures on either side of it. Yeah. It was, it was a, a, before you guys were on the board um, and the file is missing, this was, this was a, a, a stormwater basin built pre-96 pre that hasn't been maintained. So the, the fence went around it the way fences go around stormwater basins. Yeah, I guess my point that I'm trying to get across is if they're going to remove the fence, why do they need to put it back? I don't need to put it back. <laughs> you could lose kids in there. Yeah, I think you could. <laughs> but I don't I don't necessarily. I mean, I, I look to my engineers to give me a recommendation. If Eric and and uh, landscape architects think that the fence is, is needed, then. But I, I don't have any. I mean, I could see a split rail fence there or something more you know, in, in kind of in kind with the neighborhood and where it is. Yeah, there's no reason that it absolutely needs a fence. It's really just there to keep people out of it. Well, yeah, it was, it's, it's, it, as, as Andrea said, it, it was a storm basin. So that, that, that probably made sense when it was constructed to throw a fence around it. But at this point, it's now a wetland. So maybe we, maybe we, uh, maybe we celebrate it a little bit more and get rid of the chain link and put something like a split rail or something nicer there that kind of says it's, it's don't go in there, but we're not putting up a big eight foot tall or six foot tall chain link fence there. Interesting. Yeah. Good comment, John. Eric, that. is this, um, is this wetland stormwater basin part of your stormwater design system presently? We're not connecting to it or, or reusing it there is flow that still goes to it but um, we're not relying on it really we don't have enough detail on it to, to know what its volume is and what it can take what it can't take what the outflow structures are and things like that so we're not adding anything to it no we're not yeah we're not changing it at all there are uh, if I go back to the overall, presumably there's there's structures that on the site at the at Richards uh, the uh, Richardson Olmstead and other build that go to it, but we're not going to add to it. Correct. Correct. I should note that the stormwater management system has been fully evaluated by Woodard and Kern, who have been in communication with. Um, Eric and his partners through most of the week. And um, they did give us a, a sign off today that the, the project as designed and, and um, as expected to be maintained will meet the mass DEP <clears throat> stormwater standards, including the town's higher standard of 90% uh, total suspended solids removed. A lot of the um, a, a, a lot of what I saw around the edge of that pre ninety six basin was um, was vegetation that wasn't intended to be there. The cattails were intended to be there, I'm sure, but um, along the slope, a lot of that was lack of maintenance, and um, it's not it's, it it can't be functioning as it was designed because it is just a lot more vegetation woody vegetation in it than um, you would expect in a basin. Right. But great for the salamanders, Mike. Right. So speaking of 
maintenance, if it's not been maintained in the past, why would it be maintained in the future? It probably won't. And it's not part of, it's not part of this project to be, um, it, it, Eric is relying on groundwater um, recharge systems and he's not discharging into this. So his, the maintenance plan for this doesn't include the, the basin that we're, we're speaking of. Well, the classroom may help this because the classroom being there may spur the, the, that to be become part of the curriculum here. There's some either maybe light maintenance to it or some way that those kids can even more interact with it. And so it may, that, that may become something that helps this kind of neaten this up and, and control it a little bit more if they start to learn about the invasive species that might be around it, which, and you know, in New England, we're, we're swamped with these. I'm sure that they're in there as it is, but that might be part of, become part of this. Right, so I have a question. You're gonna, uh, you're proposing to remove the chain link fence and uh, you were, had been thinking you would replace it further downhill towards the basin, yep. bottom of the basin. So when you do that, you're, you have, uh, during storms, you have stuff running down into the, that basin. So how is the construction road and, and final road going to be sloped so there's, there's no runoff from the road? Eric, isn't all that, doesn't our road and everything lower than that area yeah. currently? So I just, I just switched to this. So everything's lower. The walking path, you know, is sloped such that it's going to flow into the road. Well, you're only going to get the grass shoulder on the other side of the, the walking path, which will flow into the wetland from, from up in this area. And right about in here is where it breaks, where above the break, this flows directly into the wetland. Below the break, all this actually flows towards this, this driveway uh, intersection. And everything's all the impervious areas are sloped away. I guess is my point. Okay. And you know, Mike was talking about salamanders, so this is functioning as a vernal pool. Um, well, if it has an outlet, it can't be a vernal pool. But you mean as breeding area? Right. That's a, okay. Right. So if, if salamanders are reproducing in there, then it's functioning in part as a vernal pool. Is it fair, Mike, to, as, that as an elementary school student, you saw breeding salamanders? I mean, I saw salamanders. I mean, mind you, that was I'm 31, so that was a bit ago. I, you know, I can't speak to what has happened since. I'm sure that has gone dry a few times in, in, you know, since then, so who knows what it looks like now. You have a follow up, Carol? I'm stewing on it. Thank you. So, I mean, what if it is functioning as a place where salamanders reproduce? Does that change our approach? Um, I, I, from, from my standpoint, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume there's a wildlife habitat there, whether it's salamanders or birds or some other small mammals, I, I'm- Frogs, I'm, they're using it. Yeah, I mean, other amphibians, right? I mean, it's snakes, you know. Yeah, I'm got, sure you got some, I'm sure there's some turtle life in there. You never know, if they're breeding so, there. You so never I'm, know the I'm, I'm assuming uh, that there is um, wildlife habitat there and that's a value we wanna protect. So I, I, I don't think that that, and that's really the question is, is if, if they relocate the fence by, it looks to be, five or six feet, is that going to impact the, the wildlife um, habitat? And if so, do we believe that, that there are other benefits in this project that would offset that disturbance of wildlife habitat? That's how I'm looking at it. And so um, I think that, you know, 
certainly removal of five or six feet of woody vegetation um, isn't the same as, you know, you know, something that's more significantly closer to the actual wetland itself. Um, so I, I could find myself making the argument that five or six feet um, to create this overall project um, is probably something that um, I could find myself justifying. I'll probably say that this a couple bit, bit here is that, I mean, you've got the Easton Middle School to the north and then the high school to the southwest. And then way west, you've got Clifford Grant Reservation and Oliver Ames Parker Reservation. So you've got a very large potential habitat area to the west. But then uh, the critters, if they're migrating, they're going to hit the they're going to hit the middle school and then they're going to hit the um, the Ames High School before they reach the potential of getting to the Parkview School area where this is being proposed. So I think, you know, for potential traversing for these critters to migrate, I think they'll probably turn around and find a better place over in the Clifford Grant Reservation area. So I don't think there's going to be any sort of potential like impact, impacts or any sort of takes for any sort of migrating salamanders. I'm sure they probably found a better place to go to. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah, and keep that in mind when I was in school then, you know, that whole high school wasn't there. It was a different deal. So yeah, it could all have changed since then. Yeah, are you speaking? I appreciate you speaking up, John. Great. Um, any other comments? Concerns? Any uh, public comment for 50 Spooner Street? Just giving the public a chance to raise a hand or put a comment in the Q&A box. Okay, so uh, seeing none, um, I assume you guys want to close. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so I'm going to make a motion to close and issue a permit for work and uh, order conditions for 50 Spooner Street, uh, noting um, the comments uh, in the staff report. Um, that the, um, as noted in the Woodward and Kern letter, the stormwater system shall be inspected at key points during construction. Project engineer shall submit a report and as built plans to confirm design standards and operation and maintenance plan shall be provided for the BMP's standard nine and long-term maintenance shall include inspection logs available for review upon request in accordance with the mass DEP stormwater standards. Um, also, erosion controls installed and maintained along the limit of work as shown on the plan with the following additions. Uh, silt fence with straw wattle or compost filled silt sock with biodegradable to cover, biodegradable cover is preferred and uh, we need to add erosion control along the limit of work on south side of Lothrop. There's currently no uh, erosion control on the, the, um, the drawings. Um, I mean, when you're doing the force main there. Yeah, that's what this heavy line here is. I'm switched over to another screen here, so. Oh, okay. It's okay, I'll take a look. Okay. This heavy line, dark heavy line is the erosion control. We didn't extend it much past here because this is where the fire department is. Right. Um, and I, do we, um, just I'm pausing here for a second. Um, do we want to give them the option of replacing that chain link fence with uh, other material? Any com comments from my commissioners? I mean, I'm always a, a fan of non chain link fence near wetlands. I I'm with you too. So, um, and um, do we want to make it a condition or do we want to make give them the option to do so? 
And it seems like they would be inclined to do so based on my, yeah, that's Dan's not. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Okay. So uh, also uh, replacement of the chain link fence should be done with uh, some um, um, alternative uh, non-chain link fence, such as a uh, split rail fence. And that's it. Do I have a second? Second, Thomas. Uh, roll call vote, Callfells aye. Lundin, aye. Spady, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay, so uh, next up is uh, 12 Meeting House Lane. This is a notice of intent for uh, upgrade to a residential septic. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Andrea, you're on Andrea, mute. Muted. And we lost Mike Spadia. I missed part of that meeting myself. I had to come back on. Would you like a recap? Um. Carol, do I need, uh, I mean, Tish, do I need a recap? I picked up just the last, um, I picked up the just the last condition, which was replacement of the fence with a non-chain link. Did you get the rest of it, Tish? The rest of it was as, as in, the, um, in the staff report. Oh, I got that. We're, we're missing Mike, can you promote him, please? Where is Tish? Tish is here. I got, you're allowed to talk, Tish. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Uh, and, uh, our best friend is back. So why Peter. Tell, yeah, Peter, why don't you tell us what's going on? What's happening? Uh, you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, which which one are we doing first? I have Greenfield and Meeting House. Uh, meeting House Lane, 12 Meeting House Lane. All right, let me try to share that with you. Thank you. 12 Meeting House did not get its DEP number yet, but we've gotten a butter notifications on all projects tonight. Can I ask a question? Did, did we get the DEP on the, the, the last, on 50 Spooner? Yes, DEP on 50 Spooner. Um, and we had a butter notifications. Okay. This is a 12 meeting, we, unless Tish knows differently, I didn't, I didn't see it as of 5.30 and he was working late tonight. All right, are you, you guys all set? Or are we waiting on anyone? Nope, we're all set. All set. Okay, uh, for the record, I am Peter Lyons with Collins Engineering Group, representing the homeowners for a septic repair on 12 Meeting House. This is a existing four bedroom septic system um, or an existing four bedroom home, therefore a four bedroom design. Uh, we have a intermittent stream and associative BVW to the north on the property. And we show the 50 foot buffer line cutting through the middle of the site. And that this is our 100 foot uh, inner riparian line for the, the uh, river's front resource. So uh, most of the work is occurring right around the 100 foot line to both the BVW and the intermittent stream. Uh, as you can see, we, we're kind of doing our best to tuck everything to the most compliant corner of the lot. Um, unfortunately, we're contending with relatively high groundwater out there, as well as um, what I would call horrible soils. So you can see that the leaching field is significantly larger than the house. 
um, which is never a good sign. So this is kind of just a nasty situation and we're trying to do the most compliant thing we can, uh, which ultimately is pushing the system into the back corner. Um, we're gonna utilize the existing slope in the back of the lot and do our best effort to blend the proposed grading in with that. Uh, we will have uh, significant tree removal and vegetation removal in the area of the leaching field. Uh, the tanks will be um, close to the groundwater, um, requiring significant cover over the tanks in the leaching field itself. Uh, as most of our projects, we propose erosion control around the decommissioning of the old leaching components, or in this case, um, I believe it's um, at least one leaching pit and then there's an existing septic tank and field near where the proposed system is going. So those will all be eliminated. Um, site access is going to be on the uh, parallel to the southern property line. We have proposed two series of erosion control, um, essentially bordering the left and right side of our access into the rear of the property. Due to the um, retaining walls and the close proximity of the wetlands, we're not going to be using the driveway for access. So that's why we've proposed this reason, you know, to keep the trucks and everything away from the resource area. And it'll ultimately provide an, an easier platform to them to get in and build the system. So that's kind of a win win for everybody. But um, other than that, we've proposed post conservation posts. Uh, five locations along the existing wetland line to the north of the property. Just gonna pan around, try not to make you too dizzy here, but um, we have our standard straw wattle detail as well as dewatering um, pit details and the conservation control notes. Uh, they're all pretty standard, silt sacks in the catch basins. Um, Conservation post installation, as mentioned. Um, let's see, that's that's pretty much it for my presentation. If the commission has any questions, I'll answer them now. Uh, nothing for me. Anybody have any questions? Just out of curiosity, are you cutting any trees down in for, for the access point to get into the backyard? Um, it doesn't look like it. There, there looks like there's one small landscape tree. But um, okay. I, I don't know until the erosion control goes up how tight that's actually going to be. But to, to conservatively answer your question, I would say maybe one in the access area. But that's mostly right. existing out there. Okay. Thanks. Sure. I have a, I'd like to point out something in the staff report, uh, item nine. Yep. It says, if the commission chooses to approve the project as proposed, I recommend no additional conditions. And yet, uh, there's a su suggestion of conditions, no dumping in the wetlands and any other conditions included by the commission. So I wonder if we want to just clean up that language in that first part of the sentence there, Andrea. Well, we, we, can just, we can just condition it however we want. So we'll just condition it. There's no dumping in the wetlands. Okay. I won't. I won't say as stated in the staff report this time. So. Okay. Great. Yeah. Any other comments? Only that without a DEP file number, it's you. There's a there's a low risk that they may ask for some information. So it's uh, not Tish, wise to Tish close says, the hearing. I think Tish Tish says that we got uh, DEP numbers late today. Nine Greenfield, fifty. Oh, we didn't get it for this one though. Didn't get it for this one. Okay. We didn't get it for this one. We didn't get it for prospect. Certainly you can give the, you know, it, maybe it'll be just a routine matter to close it at the next meeting. Yeah, we just continue it to the first thing. Yeah, we don't have to wait till later in the meeting. We can just do it. Um, so, so Peter, I, I, there's really no issues here. You know, standard condition, no dumping in the wetlands, but um, without a DEP, we're gonna have to continue. Yeah, I understand. I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah, unfortunately, DEP has been really 
slow yeah. for a few months. So it is what it is. Yeah, we, we, I think we've got five on the agenda that started out with DEP numbers today. So it's, you know, it is what it is. So uh, any public comment for 12 Meeting House Lane? <laughs> Raise your hand or post a question. Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, make a motion to continue 12 Meeting House Lane to our next meeting on December 7th. Lundine second. Nice. <laughs> uh, roll call vote, Caulfield's aye. Lundine aye. Spady aye. Thomas aye. Okay, Peter, uh, you're up for uh, nine Greenfield Street. Uh, this is a notice of intent for a repair and upgrade of a residential septic system. And we do have a DEP on this one, so. All right. Can you guys see that okay? Kind of. All yeah, right. Okay. Looks good. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. This one, um, another residential septic system repair, pretty straightforward. We have a BVW in the back of the property and another, what are we calling this? Uh, looks like a, a ditch, but we show the 100 foot riverfront and the 200 foot riverfront is at the street line. Uh, our proposal here is to abandon the existing soil absorption area or leaching area on the uh, east side of the house, as well as the septic tank we're proposing a, a series of a 1500 gallon septic tank to a thousand gallon pump chamber, uh, pumping up to a elevated leaching bed in the front right corner of the property. Um, as you can see, the work is entirely surrounded by our erosion control. Um, we show a dewatering location and soil stockpile areas out towards the street um, as far away as we can realistically get them from the resource areas while still giving the guys a, a realistic place to work out here. Um, we've proposed our standard conservation post, looks like six of them across the existing tree line in the back of the property. See, we have our post details, dewatering details, straw wattle details, uh, all that normal stuff. Same thing with the notes. I'm not going to run through them again, but uh, just want to point out the silt sacks and the catch basins, um, the erosion control I mentioned already. So, so that's pretty much my presentation. Um, pretty straightforward septic repair pushed it to the front yard as far as we can. And uh, this is what we're left with. Um, any questions? Uh, no, no questions uh, from me. Anybody have any questions? I just don't like seeing that part of the soil absorption system is within the wetland, the existing one. That's concerning to me. What, what I'm sorry, what did you say, John? The existing soil absorption absorption system on the site is with actually within the wetland yeah poses some concerns <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i i can i can say quickly to that that you know it, it does say the approximate location so uh, if you dig up flag six are you going to find leaching i i don't know that answer you know a lot of these plans we do are you know uh if we have any type of as built you know, sometimes we get something sketched on a, on a bar napkin and it shows a square next to the house. So oh, yeah. uh, we don't do very thorough investigation to find all the corners of the old field, if that makes sense. So this is kind of just a conservative approximate location. Um, to my knowledge, there's no, you know, breakout. There's no um, actual harm being done to the, to the wetlands there it's pretty standard to decommission the stuff in place, you know, as long as there's not a catastrophic failure, um, the least invasive thing to do is, you know, typically leave it and abandon it where it is. Um, you know, if the commission has any suggestions, um, no, but, I was, I was just making a, a comment. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get it. 
I mean, yeah, obviously we wouldn't put it there now, but um, things were different when the original, the original system or whatever, you know, whatever this old one's from. Yeah, probably prior to 72. Yeah, obviously they didn't play by the same rules. So, um, yeah, that's what I'll say about that. Yep. Any other uh, comments? Sure. This is Carol. Can you hear me okay? Yep. yep. A um, couple things here. Um, one is uh, this is in an ACEC, and I know no waiver is required because it's compliant with the simplified septic NOI. Um, but I would like to um, have a look at a document I have on my um, on my screen here, if I may sh share my screen. Okay. Where is it? Right here. Share. So here's a uh, buffer distance by function. This is in the page 24 of the Mass Association of Conservation Commissioners Wetlands Buffer Zone Guidebook. Um, Title V systems are well known for uh, releasing quite a bit of nitrogen. Uh, there are low nitrogen systems that are out in the marketplace. Um, the way this chart works is that the thin arrow indicates a range of potentially effective buffer zone distances by function. The thicker blue bar represents buffer distances that may most be most effective in accomplishing each function. So I'm concerned that in an ACEC, with removing nitrogen, we need a buffer zone of at least 100 feet. Yeah, and I think we've been through this before from the sense that uh, I am not about to implement a, a, a policy um, that is, um, certainly goes against what Board of Health wants. And um, in, unless we have a conversation with them about the specific requirements that we wanna see implemented in an ACEC. So um, I think that until we do that, I, I'm not at all in favor of, of implementing a, um, a system that, uh, let's just put it this way. I, I understand the concept. I believe that it has a potential to have a, a, a better um, result than um, a traditional system. Um, however, I, I think that we can't do this on a case by case basis, that we need to have a policy in place that's been agreed to by the Board of Health and in coordination with them um, um, ahead of time so that the applicant and um, the both boards know exactly what's gonna be expected when they're doing a, a septic repair or upgrade in the ACECs. So I, I really don't think, I mean, we've had this conversation multiple times and I, I really wish we could stop having it to be quite honest. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's, uh, I just wanted to to bring up another instance where uh, I know it's difficult I, I, to get I, to that policy discussion. I think, we, I think we can make that point without showing us charts, to be quite honest. Okay. Very good, thank you. Any other um, comments? Sure. Um, uh, we have another instance. Um, in our staff report about, I recommend no additional conditions yet, a couple are listed. And we have, um, it's in, uh, the application is compliant with the simplified septic system with the exception of the landscape debris piles. So what do we wanna, how do we wanna address the landscape debris piles? Um, so Andrea, I, I wasn't, I. I I didn't find any large landscape to be files when I was out. Was this behind one of the sheds? It was both um, behind the shed, and when you're sta when you're standing looking toward the shed to the right. So on on Peter's um, plan, it's there's an a section of um, a section of wetland that kind of creates a semicircle. Um, to the right of the shed, and it wasn't it it wasn't the the grass and leaves 
that can really push down and um, suffocate the vegetation. It was large tree limbs. Right. And, I, and I, def I definitely saw tree limbs. Yeah. So I, I wasn't, because it wasn't suffocating the ground, I, I sort of felt like it was, it was more reasonable than somebody dumping, you know, years worth of lawn and leaf mulch, you know, into the wetlands. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I was just pointing it. I was just pointing it out. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm I'm inclined to leave it in place since, it, to me, it, I, I understand it's some branches probably came down in storms and whatnot, you know, piled up behind the the the, uh, the shed and on the side of the shed. Did you notice something different, Carol, when you were out there? I didn't visit. Okay. Any other comments? Um, any public comment to... Um... And the, atten the applicant, um, the landowner is present if he wanted to raise his hand or speak. I just allowed him to talk if he chooses to. Mr. And he's Lewis? raising his hand. Yep. Do you, you have any comments, Mr. Lewis? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, I, I thank you for uh, hearing this this evening. Thank you. And um, I don't have any any comments uh, about this. We just want to, you know, we've been in, in this great town for 28 years now, and we, we want to uh, move on and enjoy our golden years, golden years senior years. Uh, but thank you very much for, for listening to this tonight. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Peter, I'm going to make a motion to close. We okay on that? Sounds good. Yes, thank you. So we do have a DEP on this, so we're going to make a motion to uh, close um, and issue a permit for work and order conditions for 9 Greenfield Street, uh, noting uh, no uh, dumping in the wetlands. Spade, a second. Um, roll call vote. Call fells aye. You're on mute, Carol. Lundy night. Speedy, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay. Okay, Peter, right. thank you. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Thanks. Uh, 236 Prospect Street. Uh, okay. This is a notice of intent for uh, septic. Oh, my God. Oh, Mr. That Lewis, your mic is open. Coming in. Just be a little <laughs> careful there. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Frank? We lost him. No, he's there. Yeah, I'm. Mo I, I'm moving him back up to panelists. Okay. Here we are, Frank. Good evening. Do you hear me? We do. Okay. Um, we have quite a difficult site here, a home that was constructed a number of years ago. Uh, the owner uh, is elderly. He's moving on. His son is now trying to liquidate the property. In fact, he does have a buyer for it. Uh, the existing septic system would not pass the Title V inspection. Uh, the property is basically surrounded by wetlands on three sides. We have an in-ground pool in the backyard. Uh, we first attempted some soil tests in the front yard, although I personally doubt that had we found good material that the area would have been large enough for a system, but we had to try in that area, which was furthest from the wetlands. And we found terrible material. It was a, uh, approximately six feet of unsuitable fill, including logs that were buried. And underneath that was some very dense till uh, that, that obviously would not pass the percolation test. We moved into the back and we found similar material close to the home. 
when we moved further back, uh, we found some excellent material that was underneath portions of the original septic system. So we are proposing to remove the original septic system and put a new system in its location. Um, the new system will be elevated at a higher uh, location to get it further from the groundwater than the existing system. The Board of Health, we've spoken to them and they are willing to grant several uh, variances that will be required to put a system there, including step back to the swimming pool. We're placing the septic system 10 feet from the swimming pool with an impervious barrier. Uh, and the system is uh, less than 50 feet from the wetlands also with an impervious barrier. There really doesn't seem to be another location on the site that would be suitable. Uh, again, the impervious barrier goes around three sides of the system, separating it from both the swimming pool and the wetlands. Uh, the owner's son was out there the other day and did go ahead and install the siltation control barrier straw waddles uh, because the backyard had been disturbed during the course of the soil testing. We wanted to protect the wetlands from any runoff as a result of that. And I believe that your agent stopped by while that work was being accomplished. Uh, also, the agent, as noted in the report, uh, observed some man-made debris that had previously, over the years, been dumped in or adjacent to the wetlands. And she asked the uh, owner's son to remove that, and that work has been accomplished. That area has been cleaned up now. Uh, so I, I believe that we have uh, complied with the requirements for the streamline review. We do not have a DEP number at this time, and I got a few more comments I'd like to um, uh, pose to the commission regarding progressing of the project once I hear some of your uh, questions or concerns. Um, so the, the, um, the site work that was being done was, was strictly test pits because th there seemed to be an awful lot of material that was moved away from the home and the back door. To my, to my knowledge, the only work that I have seen done out there, this is the last time I was on site, was test pits. As you can see from the plans, we had four test pits, one in the front and then three in the back. Uh, and that, that's all, all the work that I have any knowledge of that's been accomplished. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to believe you that that's a hundred percent accurate from your perspective. Um, I, I'm going to tell you that that the work that was done in the rear of the house was well beyond digging a test pit. So I, he, I go ahead. Andrea. He told uh, when I was there, he was um, asking about putting the silt fence, the 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 straw water, not straw wattle, the the compost filled silt sock was in place in generally the location Frank had suggested. But it um, he was talking of building a retaining wall closer to the pool. So he might've been moving some material around by the pool. And the there was, and he was taking a stockade fence down on the, as you're facing the house on the left-hand side. And he was looking to trim vegetation adjacent to the um, the house and I'm a little maybe a forsythia tree a forsythia bush that was right next to the limit of work we discussed how to do it correctly I don't know if he went crazy um, but it was generally I think and you should show your pictures because what I saw was he wasn't working by the house other than those things give me a sec So, oh, that's significantly more. 
than he had done. Yep. I, I, I assume so, yes. Because what you were describing was not that. No. So I mean, that's a couple feet of material that was removed. Well, so, I don't know how much material was actually removed because as you can see from that door coming out, that door was there. I believe he has replaced it with a new door. There was the previous door was in uh, much poorer condition than that one. Uh, but I think that's just about the existing gray within a matter of six inches at that location. He probably took some vegetation out though, don't you think, Frank? I, oh, definitely he's taken vegetation out. And the area that is probably, oh, eight feet or so past the end of that black flexible pipe is the location where we had test pit number two. Uh, so there was digging in that area from test pit two, but the test pits did not uh, extend up the side of the house where you're seeing some of the uh, grass has been removed and other vegetation removed. Yeah, so I'm just, you know, I, I mean, I, I just want the, the applicant to You know, take it a little easy until he gets a permit, you know, so. Yeah, especially for doing work within the no, the 50 foot wetland buffer. Yeah. Unauthorized. Unauthorized, as he says. <laughs> which, which could go to just about anything being done on this piece of property. But um, so I, I just, I, I'm just saying that you, I mean, you know, Frank, I, I mean, okay. you, you've been before us a lot of times. That one way to get our, our backs up a little bit is to go out and do something without talking about it first. So very definitely, and I and I had not seen this condition prior to the night. Yep, and, and I, as I said, I have no doubt that you 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 weren't there and didn't see it. And when you were there doing test pits, you you know you you know it was probably limited to that. So and, I, and I'm sure that the the applicant is is anxious to get proceeding with this and and. Uh, um, and, and get this uh, septic system done and all the other work done that he needs to get done to, to sell this home. So um, I appreciate that um, entirely. So um, so um, any other comments for 236 Prospect Street? I mean, the only comment I would have would be to incorporate whatever work has been done to date and to reflect the application that they're proposing, like after action work. But you know, that's up to the applicant on how they wanna proceed. I think he's going to propose grade, John. Okay. Because I mean, if, if what I'm showing here, grade 115, I mean, it looks like some, the cuts were made near the building as Roy has shown. So that's, that's disturbance within the 50 foot wetland buffer. And that requires authorization to do that. I'm a stickler for that kind of stuff, sorry. No, I'm, I'm with you, John. I'm with you. I mean, you know, Frank, uh, we, we don't have a we don't have a DEP number um, on this, um, and I know you have some comments uh, that you want to make to try and I, I assume it's try and issue a, a a permit without the DEP and in, in in hopes that it's all straightforward uh, from here. But but I'll, I'll let you make that point in a moment. Um, but I, I think that. If we continue this, um, I, I think that the applicant has to, we have to understand what he's doing to reestablish the, the landscape there um, and what he has in mind, uh, given the disturbance that he's done already to the grade there. So I, I don't know if that's in the, I don't think it's in the plans to, to do that, so. We did note on the plan that all disturbed areas are to be stabilized uh, with uh, landscaping or loom and seed upon completion. So that would certainly apply to this area that's been disturbed. Um, I don't know his entire plans to this area, but I do know that that is at least partially within the area that is access to the septic system. That was one of his reasons I know for requesting to remove the portion of the stockade fence. In fact, I did show on the plan that portion of that fence were to be removed uh, to create access to the work area. Um, re regarding uh, moving ahead and, and the DEP number, I do realize that it is impossible uh, for the commission to close the public hearing without having the DEP number. I do realize that we must continue this public hearing this evening. Uh, however, 
the owner does have a buyer for the property and they have a closing date scheduled right now of December the 10th, uh, which is an extremely tight schedule. He did ask if I could convey to you that and ask if there was any way possible that prior to closing of the public hearing, if we knew what your orders of conditions would be, if he could commence work in accordance with your proposed order of conditions while we're waiting for the close of the public hearing. Okay. Um, uh, noted. We'll, we'll discuss that in a, in a moment. So just um, the this the septic system as it is, it's not going to be elevated above the 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 or. I mean, tell me the elevation as it compares to the pool deck. Um, it would have been possible to put in the system without any retaining wall, but it would be above the pool deck. That is why we put a, an 18 inch retaining wall right beside the pool deck. So the surface water would be directed away from the pool. Uh, had I graded it down without the retaining wall, then you would have surface water flow from the area over the septic system directed towards the pool, which certainly would not be an acceptable si situation. Yeah, you're in a tough, you're in a tough spot, wall, you know? Yeah, 18 inch wall is simply uh, for storm drainage away from it. I am, I would like to point out also that because of some of the requirements of Title V, we are unable on this particular case to request a waiver from their regulations that would allow us to put it closer to the water table. Normally that is a waiver that the Board of Health would grant that would allow you to construct the system one foot closer. However, Title V specifically states that that waiver is not available if you're requesting uh, waivers on setback distances to buildings and or wetlands. So since we've got the wetland setback waiver, uh, we have to maintain our full uh, separation to the groundwater, which is five feet in this case. That's the reason we are re also required to have that elevation there that would uh, dictate the small retaining wall by the pool. Right. Um, just just as, as another point to be consistent, I, I do want to note for the record this is, that this is another um, septic replacement in an ACEC. Um, yeah. So for the record, Carol, I just want to be consistent about saying that, you know, I want to be consistent about it. So um, any other questions from the, the commission before we get into some sort of discussion about potentially giving the, the applicant some uh, direction? Andrew, you want to, can you give us some perspective from, from your point of view on the risk associated with um, having the applicant proceed on some theoretical order of conditions? In a public meeting. Uh, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> had, had I known the question was gonna come up, I would have not. <laughs> a, um, the, depart the conservation has enforcement discretion. You, there are a lot of violations in the world and and you choose which ones you take enforcement on, that some have higher risk than others. Um, there's a, there's taking, there's, there's unauthorized work before the order's issued. There's, there's work that proceeds before the order is recorded. There's recording the order before the, before the 10 day appeal period is over. These are, these are risks that applicants can take with varying degrees of concern. The, the, it's you, you choose what you take an enforcement action against. Um, the threat of an, of an appeal is very low here. DEP has um, a strong um, sense of respect for the local commission to do the right thing and we don't have any abutters um, that I see yet um, that have commented. If you don't, if you don't comment, then you can't appeal. Um, the applicant's not going to appeal. The conservation commission is not going to appeal. So chance of starting work before appeal is pretty low. Chance of recording before you appeal is low. Um, 
honestly, there's a pretty, there's a 12 inch silt sock on this site, which is very level for work that is going to be completed. If, you know, if he has, if he has um, contractors in place, could probably be completed in a week once they start, if not, if not less. Um, so the chance of erosion are low, but you, you should acknowledge, um, um, but so, then they're, but then they're starting when you, but then they're starting work without your order and so, you are fully aware of it. Yeah. To me, there's already a violation in place. So I would probably vote no to this one. So the, the other thing, isn't there a risk to the, um, I mean, although they can condition it in their sale, I mean, we don't issue the, the, the decision till December 7th. Um, and there's, we can't issue the, the permit for 10 days, right? No, we can issue, we can issue immediately. We have 21 days administratively to get it done. He's supposed to wait 10 days right. after. That's his risk, months. right? But to record again, that's a low that's a low risk there, that somebody's going to um, that that somebody's going to appeal like DP. So so John is uh, John is is raised a, a concern here about unauthorized work that's already been performed, um, and you know either out of ignorance or bad faith. Uh, we'll assume ignorance, but um, so you got to add you got to add the the sun factor too. He's doing this. He's does you know his dad's it's his dad's property. His dad's out of town, and it's his responsibility to get this done. You have no idea how many phone calls this guy's getting. Right. So. Um, any other comments from the commission before I go to the public? Mike, anything? No, no, I have nothing to add. So John, just give me a, a little bit more perspective from your part. And I really respect your 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 position on this because you know you live and breathe this kind of stuff every day. I mean, I just I don't understand. I mean, they're filing a notice of intent and they're they're basically going ahead above and beyond what they were permitted to do. I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, without knowing what the, like for instance, I had a similar project where, you know, we were permitting a project in town and it was a retaining wall. And one of the applicants decided to go above and beyond what they were permitted to do. And I asked them, why did you do it, do that? Because she said that I thought I could do that. And I said, no, you can't. You have to basically any work that's done within a hundred feet of a wetland, you have to get our, our, our confirmation. And, you know, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, they know that they have to get the septic work done. I just, I don't understand why they think that they can do grading and all sorts of other work around the area near the house, because the house is within, well, within, um, you know, proximity to the wetland. You would think that any work that you're doing is within jurisdiction of the CONCOM. Why not incorporate that in a permit application? I just, it, it baffles me that, you know, this kind of work occurred without getting any sort of, sort of authorization. I just don't understand. You know, I'd like to just add that he can't, he can't start without a septic uh, board of health approval. So I would have to sign off on the board of health septic in order for him to get the septic system um, board of health permit. Not something I usually do before you take a vote. Not something I've ever done before you take a vote. Okay, Frank, I, I think that we're getting into the, uh, the the realm of setting precedent to something we've never done before um, in, in a situation where um, the, the applicant has, whether intentionally or unintentionally, um, you know, done something that, that would create an issue with us under normal circumstances. So um, my... my my opinion is that uh, we should vote to continue this to December 7th. Any feedback, Frank? Uh, 
I know that's not what you wanted to hear, and it's not what your client wants you to, wants to hear either. But exactly, I I, I really don't have any other feedback. Is that a motion? Not yet. No. This flat sign is a landscaper. Uh, I don't know what he was intending on doing out there, but I'm sure that his his goal is to have a very presentable uh, property that can be sold. So I know he wasn't intentionally trying to destroy it or do anything that would, that would harm the property or the wetlands. No, but I think it is, is John, John mentions, he probably had some knowledge that, that he should be more judicious in what he's doing prior yeah. to getting a permit. And I would, I would re uh, reiterate to your client that he should allow you the opportunity to present whatever it is on the site plan and come back to the commission so we can get the whole complete package. Um, you know, I don't want to see something piecemeal. If it's going to be septic repair and patio, great. You know, awesome. Let's let's get it on a plan and let's let's try to permit it the right way. Um, that's usually how I handle my my operations and the way I like to handle projects. So, Frank, I, I think it's going to be the uh, the, um, the the recommendation here is for you to uh, go back to the client, find out exactly what he's doing as far as uh, whatever landscaping he's doing back there, um, and uh, and and include that on the plan so that we have it for December seventh. We can have a full vote then, and and he can get permission he, he needs to do this. So. So I, I am going to make a motion to continue this uh, hearing to December 7th. Lundin's aye. Uh, roll call vote, call fells aye. Lundin aye. Eddie aye. Thomas aye. Oh, I'm sorry, just a second. Hang oh, I think there was somebody, somebody had their hand raised and then, yeah, Rob has his hand raised. So before we move on here, can you promote him, Andrea? There you go. Rob? I think you can unmute yourself. There you go. Go ahead, Rob. Just identify yourself and. Uh... Rob. Yes, you can unmute yourself, uh, Rob. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So can you just identify yourself and then you have any comments? I'm Robert Sullivan. I'm the uh, son of the uh, homeowner, Bernie Sullivan. <laughs> okay. I, was, uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment back to the, the septic tanks go where that spot was there. I was just um, trying to get access. I had spoke to Andrea about just getting some access to the back corner there. Uh, also, the water was washing into that door. So that, that, that was the only reason I worked in that. I wasn't, I wasn't, there's no patios, there's no nothing. It's just going to be loom and seed when the tanks are installed. The tank is pretty much in that area behind the house. Oh, okay, but I, but I think the question is why would you have begun that, that, that work before? I mean, Andrea gave you permission to take down the stockade fence, but I, I, I think it, are you indicating that you felt she gave you more? Um, I, I, I probably was a little overzealous, but um, I was just trying to, that's the access. Everything's got to come right down that corner. So I was speaking to her about access. You know, the truck's got to come in. Everything's got to come in right tight to that corner. So that's all I was, you know, I was just grading it. I didn't, and the other problem we had is we changed that door that was all rotted out. The door was lower. So the water was going into the house. You know, through time, my mother did all the plantings and everything out there. So she had the, you know, the water going the wrong way. So when it would rain, the water would go in that door, which, which is, you know, it was termites and bugs and everything. So I changed the door. We know we're doing the septic in the right behind the house, you know, the tanks and everything. So that's all. I just went around that corner right there. But I did that after I put the socks and everything out that Andrea saw. So I, you know, I did the socks and everything. I, I thought we were all set with the... Um, just the back of the house. It was all dug up from the test pit, you know, right in that corner. So I, that's all, you know, I, my father's all over me. My mother has Alzheimer's. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a story. You know what I mean? He's every day I get a call on this. So I'm trying to just move it along. That's all. I apologize. 
Okay. I, I appreciate that, Rob. I, I think that you know, one of the things to take away from this is is to stay within the 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 permission that you're you're given, and and uh, and, and that way we don't have any questions. Well, I thought I was because that's the access that's coming in with everything. The, the problem is, the, the, the problem is, Rob, that the, the dirt is taken all, all the way over to where the, the patio for the deck is. I mean, you, you it wasn't just in the corner. So, I mean, it, you, you took all that dirt out. So, you know, it, it's it's all regraded in that spot. I mean, I, I did have the picture up. I don't know if you got to see it, but, um, it, you know, and I can appreciate that the, the door um, was you know, you were concerned about water coming in that door, um, no more so than maybe the last 30 years has been. So, um, I well, like I said, the door was all So, I mean, from my perspective. All rotted out of the termites. So we replaced the door, you know, that, right? My father's been there for 48 years. So you've got 48 years of planting. So I just thought that that's where the tank was going. The tank's pretty close to the house there. So when they do the overdigging and everything, it's, it's Rob, I, I, I'm not disputing the fact that, that they're going okay. to they're gonna have to dig all that property up. I, I'm not disputing okay. that. What, I, what I'm disputing, though, is, is the fact that you went ahead and started the work without getting permission from the commission to do so. Okay, I understand. I understand. I was trying to correct the door thing. I understand. Okay, so uh, we, 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 we had a, did we vote on the motion, Tish? I'm sorry, I'm, I've lost track. <laughs> Didn't second it. You took discussion. Okay. So, uh, any other public comment for two thirty six prospect? Okay. So, seeing none, um, uh, make a motion to continue two thirty six prospect to December seventh. Lundin, aye. Okay, Lundin, we'll, we'll, I second. think you seconded. Lundin, second. Roll call vote. Call fills aye. Lundin, aye. Spady, aye. Thomas, aye. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up is uh, 81 Beaver Dam Road, which is a notice of intent for um, construction of a residential attached two car garage. I'm gonna bring Jeff Cameron up. He's the, he's the applicant landowner. Yeah, um, and trying to figure out which one of these would be the best for us to. Um, it's the one that's the repair as opposed to the as built. Uh, okay. It's kind of got a pinkish tint to it, which is unfortunate. I, I got it. I'm with you, Andrea. Is that the one? Yeah, because that has the distance to the wetland. It does. From a long time ago. Okay, uh, Mr. Cameron, just identify yourself and give us a little idea of what uh, the project's about here. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Jeff Cameron, 81 BB Dam Road. Thanks for having me on this evening. I want to particularly thank uh, Patricia and Andrea for their assistance just in uh, getting me to this point. Um, my proposal is for adding um, an attached to car garage uh, within the boundaries of the existing driveway and um, le actually leaving a little bit of the driveway on one edge uh, of, the ex uh, of the expansion. Um, would not be interrupting any of the um, Imper uh, impervious areas um, around uh, the property it would be staying on only the current impervious areas. And um, as you can see, uh, you know, the, the entire footprint of the expansion is within the 100 foot buffer. Um, so I, you know, I have no expectations of trying to seek any uh, a way around that. And you can even see that part of my existing property is, is within that. So I'm fully prepared to um, you know, adhere to the requirements of the conservation committee um, for what I need to do on my property with my uh, existing conditions surrounding that. 
um, and here this evening to um, to take any questions and how I can you know, continue to address. So um, the so the, the the one thing that's a a, a little bit um, uh, of a challenge here for um, for, for me is uh, like I don't we don't have any um, erosion control on the, this plan, right? So um, what, what's the what's the plan for erosion control? Uh, so my plan, um, it, just as a point of reference, I'm, I'm a commercial contractor, so I actually frequently work with conservation committees um, throughout multiple municipalities throughout the state. My intent. Um, would be that, um, you know, silt, um, silt bags at the catch basin at the front of my property, there, there is one at the top of the driveway. Um, uh, the uh, orange silt fencing along the entire, I'll call it plan, plan east um, property line from front to back. So I think that that is that's a couple hundred feet. Well, let's call it about 300 feet for now. Um, and also with the um, you know, with the hay waddles um, to to go along with that to prevent any of the runoff of you know silts that come off of the driveway and the disturbance from the construction to uh, prevent that from getting past my property line. Um, so, um, I, I think I'd probably like to see some some details on that. Um, I'm just losing my. Uh, I share here. Um, so um, I think um, the other thing that I think is probably, even though we're going on um, impervious um, material, I'd like to understand what's happening with the, the, the roof drainage as far as are we going to um, um, take care of that in the uh, and from a stormwater management standpoint, instead of just letting it run uh, free? So um, there's currently an existing um, line that drains some of the, re uh, the gutters on the back of the house um, that, that bring it um, over to the, the edge of the property. Um, what I would, I would look to do, um, and I'm here to also, um, you know, to, to consider the um, the direction that conservation may may uh, request, um, I'd, I'd consider utilizing um, a similar measure to try to to try to bring that water to the edge of the property instead of necessarily having to have it um, just wash onto pervious area and then just find its way across the yard. While while going across the yard may help with some suspended solids in the grass and whatnot. Um, Again, I, I'm 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 here to hear um, the conservation's you know requests and um, and make sure I'm I'm, I'm adhering uh, to those. So there, there, there's there's multiple different ways that we could go um, about it. So I'm honestly uh, open to your suggestions. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in in most cases um, when we're talking about being inside the buffer zone here, is that you know we're looking usually for um, that that roof roof drainage to uh, be, um, you know, piped into a, a, some sort of a dry well or, or some other stormwater um, system. So um, not just necessarily running it out somewhere, but um, rather sort of taking care of it right there, then and there and having it be able to uh, uh, be handled uh, as far as uh, uh, groundwater uh, absorption, so. So uh, I'd, I'd be happy to entertain that, I uh, actually recently, um, a member of your board um, visited my property yesterday. You probably saw some disturbance in the lawn. Columbia Gas recently replaced a gas line and uh, ripped my lawn up nicely for me. Um, in the process of doing so, they exposed a dry well um, that, that was in the lawn, which had that um, attachment to it. I was not aware that that dry well um, had existed, but it is about a six foot uh, diameter dry well. And uh, uh, I, quickly realized that, oh, well, th this could be convenient if um, conservation was, was approving of that uh, uh, type of method. So I, I believe I have a drywall that I could tie into already through the piping that currently exists. Okay, well, I think- Much narrower than the engineers usually suggest. 
What did you say? Sorry, six, you... Inches. six inches is much narrower than the engineers usually provide. I think he was talking about a six oh. foot drywall. Yes, six okay. foot di diameter. Okay. The, the drywall itself, I, I don't, he didn't say what the piping was to it, so. Okay. There's a six inch PVC line that goes to it. It's right about where uh, it's actually kind of, if you write where the arrow is on the, where it says um, 62 feet and 11 inches and the arrow to the number six, it's basically right in between those. I was not aware it existed until about two weeks ago when um, that gas line replacement changed. Yeah, yep. You know, they, they literally, it actually, the edge of it hits the driveway. If I, I drew the circumference from where they found it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, so the other thing is uh, that we normally see on, on something like this is uh, permanent markers, um, just to indicate that probably edge of lawn just to indicate that, you know, that that's, you know, conservation uh, restriction beyond that. So as far as um, wetland boundaries, so um, that's probably something we'll, we'll want to see on the plan um, as far as permanent markers. And Andrea can give you some samples of what we've done in the past. Usually it's a four by four inserted in the ground, sticks out about 18 inches with a a, a medallion on top is the most common one we see. Okay. And that would be placed um, within, I'll, I'll say the woods, um, at the delineation of um, the edge of, of, um, of wetlands? We, we, would, we would probably want you to put it right at the edge of your lawn since you're already right oh, in okay. the zone. So that, and, and that's just a, so that anybody who not just you, you understand it, but you've come before us, it's a subsequent owner or whatnot who understands, you know, they, they can't expand their lawn beyond the, the edge of the, what's already there, so. Gotcha, uh, I'd be happy to be do dumping so. anything um, in the, in the lots. And, and I was the one who was out there on Saturday, so. Um, oh, gotcha. And, and so, and you know, there wasn't anything in the wetlands that I didn't want to see in the wetlands from them, other than lots of uh, green briar in there, that was, so, um, <laughs> but um, any other questions from the commission? Um, I'm going to put up a different, I'm going to go to a different plan just so you have some sense of what he's trying to do. So one thing in, in Mr. Cameron, it, let me just speak for you. The under, the under garage is in the back here or is it right here where the garage is going to go there's you have a two car under right yes it's right where your arrow is right and is now there and the and the garage you would drive into the stripes it's pretty much too small for me to fit either one of my cars in so it's my kids storing it storage area yeah and it's good for the lawnmower too but you know uh, yeah. so um, so just to, to give some perspective to the rest of the commission. So he's got a two car under here that's um, really not uh, meeting his needs. Yeah, page four or five of that construction document shows it. Yeah, that one. Yes, there you go. So he's proposing a, a, a garage with a, the, um, uh, with a, a family room or playroom of some sort over um, as, as I understand it. So, okay, so that gives you some perspective of what we're seeing here. There is a, some gentle slope that goes, the, the driveway goes down to it. It's not severe at all. It's a, mm -hmm. maybe a, a couple of feet um, um, from the, where the driveway meets the road down to where the garage um, driveway part portion is, so. 
at least from my observation. Okay. Correct. Any other comments from the commission? Or what do we have for elevations and slopes away from the where the garage would be? Slopes up to the backyard. How much? Um, What's the rate? It, it actually, it actually go. Um, Jeff, you can answer these questions better. You're, you live there and, and you're a contractor, so you, you understand the, the question. Yes, I do. Um, so if, you, if we go back to the other plan, I may be able to depict it a little bit better because some of the grades show um, on that side of the property and where the old septic tank was and whatnot um, in the as-built plan. So the, there are some grad, grades on this as-built plan. Yeah. Funny. So yeah, it, it actually doesn't show me as much as I wanted to, but but I couldn't I can't explain it. So at the on, on this plan, at the back of the existing driveway is a retaining wall. That retaining wall is just shy of three feet tall. It's like three steps that then walk you up. So um, and the yard does not slope any more than a foot higher than that. So from the back of the driveway to the back of the property, it doesn't slope up any more than three to four feet. It's a very flat piece of land, but everything gradually slopes away from the house. Right, and what about to the right of the proposed driveway, uh, proposed garage? The right of the proposed, um, or the right of the proposed garage existing driveway, it's a very gradual slope to the edge of the property. I would say it is less than six inches. Um, and then as it goes off the property, I'm assuming that when they did the yard prior to my purchase of the home, you know, that the, the yard was raised up a little bit, right? When you get to the edge of the property, then it slopes off a couple more inches and you start to see more of a slope away from the property um, at that point. Again, it's, a, it's very gradual though. Right, it makes me want to look at the, um buffer zone function by slope it's this one this one has like wouldn't even have a percent slope because we're about um he's talking about six inches um in, over a distance of 60 feet from the bvw and that bvw is not on his property so he is constrained to keep it as a natural buffer because he doesn't own it Right. Yeah, it's. I, I'd say on his property from the from the east side of his of the proposed addition, um, very gentle slope away. Um, it is. If he had said it was flat, I wouldn't have contradicted him. Um, type of, you know, slope. So. Right. So um, just just for my own interest, I'm looking at the. Um, a slope and um, buffer function chart showing that a 5% uh, slope is optimum for removal, removal of most pollutants and 18 to 12% is optimum for removing sediments. So I wonder if we care. I think it's, I think the slope is, is closer to 1%. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly, I mean, first of all, we want him to treat his, 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 his roof runoff anyway, but even if we're talking about driveway runoff or something like that, it, it's, it's, it, it's so gently sloping away that it's, it's performing that, that function, I think. It, there isn't, it isn't steep at all in any way, shape, or form for it to. Yeah, I have to concur. I'm looking at um, topographic information right now, and it's relatively flat. Unless I had LIDAR, I could get it to maybe like half a foot. But it's a nice property to the right there, that Beaver Brook and then uh, the Beaver Brook Woods. Yeah. Nice property. Right. So what I think I'm trying to say is that um, flat is, uh, is not optimum for removing most pollutants and 5% is great for most pollutants. Eight to 12% is best for sediment removal. 
So with such a flat uh, escape to the right of the garage, um, the suggestion from the Mass Association of Conservation Commissioners buffer zone handbook is to increase the width of the buff buffer zone. He's, we're infiltrating the water. Yeah, we're attenuating the, the surface runoff. So I don't know how this applies. Well, uh, so what about sediment removal? I don't see how there's gonna be any sediment concerns because it's all just sheet flow off the roof. Right, what about drywall? Yeah, it's gonna all go, it's all gonna be captured in a gutter system that gets piped into a drywall and that water infiltrates into the ground because it's captured within like a, think of it in a, a small tank. Basically you're taking the water that hits the spouse and everything goes into a um, you know, confinement pipe and then eventually goes to a dry well that infiltrates into the ground. So there's gonna be no chance for any sort of surficial uh, distur disturbance or any sort of sedimentation occurring. Okay, good, thank you. Yep. So any, any other comments? Um, any public comment for 81 Beaver Dam? So seeing, uh, seeing none. Um, Jeff, I, I think that what we're gonna need to see is, um, we're gonna need to uh, see um, the, the erosion control um, on the, we should see it on the plan. So we, and, and some details about exactly what you're gonna use. And, you know, um, if you've got um, um, stormwater drains on, on the street or whatnot, silt sacks, um, you also want to um, uh, deal with the, some detail about how you're gonna handle the roof runoff into yeah. that potential dry well. Yeah. And the other thing is uh, permanent markers along that, um, that eastern uh, side of your yard, uh, you know, maybe one every 50 feet or so, maybe three or four of them there um, uh, to, to do the job. Will do. And I, and I think once we get those, I think once, once we get those on the plan, you can come back to us and we can, and with the detail about the storm. I, I think the big issue here, it, it seems to me like you, you understand erosion control, so I don't, necessarily have to be overly concerned about that, but I'd like to see the detail. But I think for us to, to just understand uh, what's happening with the stormwater runoff uh, from the roof. Okay, happy to do so. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that that gets on plan. Okay, uh, any other comments from anybody? Okay, so motion to continue uh, 81 Beaver. I, I assume you can get that done in the next week or two before our next meeting, Jeff. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, continue uh, 81 Beaver Dam Road to December 7th. Spade a second. Uh, roll call vote. Caulfield's aye. Blundine aye. Spade aye. Thomas aye. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time. Okay. Um, 300 Foundry Street. No, that got continued. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh. Am I looking at the wrong one? Okay, so 300 Foundry was continued? Yeah, he, um, he's he got um, a, we have peer review going on with Wooded and Curran. It's fine, so, so since it's on the agenda, do I have to continue it? A motion to continue 300 Foundry to December 7th. Lundin, I. Okay, we have 80 on the second. <laughs> Uh, roll call vote, call fells aye. Lundin aye. Beatty aye. Thomas aye. Uh, 23 Deer Run Road. This is a notice of intent for a pool, uh, pool house and hot tub. I'll bring up um, Josh White. Asked to. Hi, Andrea. It's actually Amanda. I don't know why the name didn't change. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing his computer today. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen, if that is okay with you guys. Let me stop sharing. So I actually, I think I did already.
Go ahead. Awesome. Oh, that's the old plan. All right. I was in a Zoom meeting and my um, name came up as Juan Carlos once. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a good one. You know, Juanita. We're, I'll have to use that as my next name. We'll start changing our names. <laughs> I, I've, seen, I've seen someone come in as Huggy Bear. Just to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I didn't, I didn't name myself Juan Carlos, so. Okay, so uh, we met with you folks last time. My name is Amanda. I'm from Jacobs Driscoll Engineering. Um, we met a few weeks back and discussed the plan that you see in front of you, um, of which- We don't see the plan. We see your uh, file names. Oh, you don't? Let's yeah, see. We see like a file directory. You share. Check to see, you, have, you might have there two screen choices. I have multiple ones. Can you see it now? Yes. All right, perfect. So um, we had brought this in front of you at the last commission meeting. It is a proposed pool with hot tub, uh, pool house, grill area, and impervious pavers. Um, at that time, you guys wanted to see it moved further away from the wetlands. So we did in fact, not only did we move it further away from the wetlands, uh, but we also relocated the hot tub. It used to be over here, but now it's out of the buffer zone. Um, so the only thing that is proposed within the buffer zone are the impervious pavers that you see here, as well as the fence line. Um, we decreased the amount of disturbance by about 410 square feet. So the previous area of disturbance was 1,050 and the new area of disturbance is 640 uh, within the buffer zone area. Um, and now we will no longer have to remove any of the trees over here as well. So it's just what you see right here for tree removal. And this will be the new tree line up against where the erosion control is. Okay, so I, I think that was what we requested you do. Mm -hmm. So, um, any any um, questions from the commission? I guess uh, this meets all the planning setbacks and everything. So, you're also mm -hmm. that too. Okay. Yep. Can you salvage the gazebo? Uh, yeah, he'll be able to work around that. Okay. Yeah, this is Carol. Um, given that the uh, entirety of the buffer zone is presumed significant to the protection of our wetland values, and you're taking down trees, uh, I wonder if you've had any thoughts about uh, replacing some of those trees. Uh, to my knowledge, no, I don't believe, you know, the property owner has thought about doing that. I mean, there really isn't much space for him to put other trees in. Um, yeah, I mean, this wasn't really discussed at the last meeting either. You didn't really seem to have a concern with it then. Um, we are reducing the amount of trees being removed and by moving it up, we were previously proposing uh, a lot of tree removal in this area. And now we are reducing that, like I said, by like 400 square feet. Right, I appreciate you doing that. That is a, a, a good, um, big improvement. Um, but still, when you're removing those trees, you're removing habitat. So I, for one, am in favor. I understand favor. that. Sorry? I understand that. Yep, so I, for one, am in favor would be to make an effort to replace that habitat. Or there really isn't any room or space on the property for him to do that. Could you could you pan down again, please again under conservation note, do you mind? Sure. 
Yeah. So your new area of disturbance uh, is 640, right? Yep. So what is the net decrease that you have for a disturbance? It would be 410 square feet. So yep. the previously proposed was uh, 1,050. Right. Okay. And then it was the 640. And let me see if I can actually pull up the other plan. Is this the other one? No, I'm just sharing my screen so I can do that. Yeah. So it's you're you're decreasing the the footprint by forty percent, basically. Then. Yes. Okay. So. That's this, pretty significant, right there. Right. Yeah. This this is the previous plan right here. Yep. We were gonna remove from here, all the way through here for the tree area. And now none of this is being disturbed whatsoever. You can see the difference here. So now it's just this, oop, hello. <laughs> I make you guys dizzy, I'm sorry. Uh, now it's gonna be just this portion right here. So all of this is gonna remain intact now, whereas previously we had proposed to uh, remove some of that. Right, so I mean, my thought process is the commission has the ability to allow or grant up to 5,000 square feet of, of work impacts and, and everything like that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think 640 versus, I'd rather take the 640 versus the 1,050. I don't know about everybody else, um, but I think this is a equal balance between providing the um, abutter, their pool system that they're looking to propose, but also providing the potential habitat values and protection of the wetlands. So I'm comfortable with this design as being proposed. I don't know about everybody else. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, uh, that, that they have, they listened to our, our last comments and decreasing the impact on the, the wetlands. I, I don't think that we um, conveyed to them that we wanted zero. I, I think we wanted them to decrease the amount um, that was happening at, at that point. And I think that, uh, I, I'm okay to move forward with the plan that's in front of us. Yeah, and I'm with you as well, John. I feel, you know, I, my concern was all the trees being removed last time, and now this is definitely not what we wanted. So I'm more than happy with it. So um, any public comment for 23 Deer Run Road? Can give the applicant a chance to talk if he wants to. You, you want to raise your hand? It's Mr. Keene, right? Yeah, it is Mr. Keene. I'm not sure if he's here. Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, hello, Joe. Hello. Um, no, listening to the conversation, I don't think I have anything else to add right now. Thank you. Any other public comment for 23 Deer Run Road? Uh, Seeing none, um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, close the hearing and issue a permit for work and order conditions for 23 Deer Run Road, um, noting that uh, the permit markers have been already installed, uh, started construction. Um, the air between the markers and the wetland uh, will be maintained as a no disturb zone as a perpetual condition. Uh, pool operation and management, um, we expect that um, that the pool filtration will avoid um, harsh uh, chemicals, uh, preferably UV or um, salt water filters. It's a um, salt water filter. Okay, great. And uh, we also prohibit any discharge into the wetlands uh, from the pool. Um, we also need you to create a gravel splash guard around the pool if needed. Okay. Um, no, one quick question with the uh, markers, the ones that are already installed, are those significant enough or do you require additional ones? So I, I saw one, how many are out there? Uh, according to the plan, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it looks like. That's plenty sufficient. <laughs> for, for the amount of area that it's covering, that, that, that is plenty. I think, I'm, I think I saw two now that I think about it, but they, they, they were visible from each other and I, I was happy with, with what was there, so. Okay, fantastic. That, that's my own personal opinion. Anybody have any comments about it? That's plenty. Um, okay, so that's the motion on the table. Do I have a second? Thomas, second. 
Ooh. Thomas. Give it to Thomas. Yeah. Uh, roll call vote. Caulfield's aye. Lundin, nay. Spadia, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay, 3 1. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And thank you for uh, working with us on this. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Um, 109 Blackbrook Road. Uh, this is an NOI for a septic. Uh, we had uh, them in uh, last meeting, and I think they have a new plan in front of us. And I promoted the engineer, Brad Fitzgerald, up to panelist. And there he goes. I'm here. Hey, Brad. Hey, Brad. Hello. Um, do you want me to, to share the plan or? Yes, if you would, please. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm too old to learn something new. Uh, come on. I'll keep the house and take care of you. <laughs> At least I need someone to teach me. <laughs> yeah, I'll come over. <laughs> um, so here is the uh, plan. So there you go. You hey, I'm Brad Fitzgerald from SFG Engineering, 28 Main Street in Lakeville, Project Engineers. This is a septic system repair. We brought it in uh, two meetings ago and um, there was an issue uh, about the drainage ditch on the south side of the property. We, we had not shown it. Um, apparently my partner, was, it was so thick in there, he just didn't really realize it was there. And we went out there about a week ago, Saturday, and it was a lot thinner. We were able to flag the wetlands and locate them and put them on the plan. Um, as you can see, you had instructed me to try to see about moving the system back out of the 100 feet from the easterly wetland. But once we put in this um, BVW associated with this drainage ditch, um, we don't, don't have any room to move it into the, the area just east of the garage. So... Um, we've left it up where we proposed it. It's about 70 feet from that easterly BBW. It's about 66 from the, the newly located um, wet, wet area associated with the drainage ditch. Um, so we've really kind of maxed out, put it as far. I actually even moved it up a couple of feet more to the north just to gain a couple more feet off of that southerly wet area. So... Um, We've got to, you know, we feel as far from every wetland as we can. Um, and we've got it tucked up in that corner. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, now that we see the other wetland on here, our, our, our questions are answered, um, at least from, from my perspective. So, um, so I, I do, do appreciate that. Um, and any other questions from the commission? I, th I think they've answered our question. I'm good. Okay, uh, any public comment for um, 109 Blackbrook? Seeing, uh, seeing none, um, I will make a motion to uh, close the hearing, issue permit for work and order conditions for 109 Blackbrook uh, Road. Um, so, just, just one second. So, so Andrea, there's, there's a comment in, in the staff report about the wetland lines not confirmed because they didn't, they didn't delineate that. They were delineated by um, their engineering staff. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so, um, so uh, make a motion to issue print for work and order conditions, uh, noting the uh, conditions in the staff report. Carol's got a question. Oh, go ahead, Carol. Right. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, in the staff report number seven under recommendations, uh, uh, it says wetland medallions can be located along the back fence line. Um, I wonder if we want that to say shall be located rather than can be. Yeah, I honestly would have changed the verb. Um, this is, there's this thing that happens between not wanting to tell you what to do, and then when I write it, very much want to tell the person what to do. I want to tell the applicant what to do, not you. 
Okay, so uh, let me let me start over. I'll rescind that motion. Let me start with a new motion. And I hope you're ready because now I have to read it all. Make a motion to issue permit for work and order conditions. Wetland medallion shall be located along the back easterly fence line. The wetland lines are not confirmed. Any future filings will have wet, wetland professional flags and all wetland resources within 100 feet of the proposed work area. If seasonal conditions pre prevent reseeding disturbed areas, the exposed surfaces shall be covered with hay or straw to prevent erosion, filter met to remain in place and in good repair until all disturbed areas are stabilized with vegetation. No dumping in the wetlands shall be considered identified as a perpetual condition. Do I have a second? Lundin, second. Uh, roll call vote, Kalfels, aye. Lundin, aye. Beatty, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay, thank you, Brad. All right, thank you very much. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Um, 34 uh, Round Table um, Road, that was continued. Rory froze and he's gone. Hmm. Um, he was reading from the agenda. If anybody else would like to read um, about 34 Round Hill and make a motion. Mike, I think that's that's you. I think it's me, right? Yeah. All right. Where am I at here? Well, let me pull up my work head. Go up to page one. All right. Okay. Yep. Um, 34 round, round table wants to be continued to December 7th. Okay, so that's all I have to say. <laughs> so I 34 round, to. I make a motion to continue 34 round table uh, to when? Sorry, December 7th. Thomas, second. All right, all's in favor. Blondine, aye. Spady, aye. Thomas, I give me a heart attack out here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Never do that again. Rory, get back on here. Where is he? <laughs> Rory needs to be brought up to host. Um, um, uh... Good job, Mike. Mike, Thanks, guys. And that Rory's... was great. That was great. Rory is there, guys. He's in the comments. Yeah. I think he just commented on it. <laughs> he's, he's now muted. You're muted. I, I never left. I was here. I heard everything you guys said. <laughs> Thanks for the meanest practice run ever. <laughs> I think I got accidentally demoted by somebody. So wow, I apologize. It wasn't me. It could. It had, it had to have been me. I didn't do that on purpose. God. I, oh my. That's <laughs> so, very uh, bad. Thirty uh, Baron Drive, certificate of compliance. Okay. You you want to handle these two together? Or, I, I mean, would. They're, they're separate, but just give us the height, the overarching uh, sure. issue. There's a subdivision off of um, Mill Street called Barron Estates, which was approved back in uh, 2016, which means that the water conditions is pretty darn over. <laughs> and um, the, the subdivision road is in place and the only work in our jurisdiction is in the is in the front of the property along Mill Street. There's a BVW on either side. Though there's quite a few wetlands and vernal pools in the subdivision, but they are well protected by a conservation restriction that you guys have already executed on the property. So as properties go, some banks require partial certificates be released because this is one of those examples where the order went across the entire subdivision instead of individual lots. This is what we're trying to avoid in the sawmill property by having the, by having the lots be separate decisions. Um, so uh, both of these two lots, number 28 and number 30, are up in the highlands of the property, very far from your jurisdiction. Um, the road itself is not complete. It has a binder coat, coat on it. It's gonna need a final coat it's, and the sidewalks are gonna 
need to be um, have a final coat and some street trees need to be put in, but and things like that. But the planning board has a performance bond to make sure that work is done. Um, and I'm their construction supervisor, so you know it'll get done. So um, while while the work in your jurisdiction isn't completed, it doesn't affect these two lots. So I recommend that you allow the lots that are out of your jurisdiction to go ahead and be constructed, um, knowing that the, the planning board has full, full authority and motivation to uh, get the road completed as required. There yeah, is, um, if you were to do that, there are some uh, standard conditions uh, that become perpetual, but not, it's maintenance of the stormwater, it's, it's no salts and um, on the road. And so they're really homeowner association issues because um, they're not, there's no wetlands on these properties. I don't think those conditions apply to the individual lots. Um, so anybody have any questions? Any objections to moving forward with this? Any uh, public comment for either 30 Baron or 28 Baron? We'll handle them separately, but if anybody has any public comment. Uh, seeing none, uh, make a motion to issue a partial certificate of compliance for 30 Baron Drive, uh, noting that um, perpetual conditions in the order of com conditions and permit, special condition number one, number 49, number 50, and number 51 are perpetual. Lundin, second. Uh, roll call vote, call fells aye. Lundin, aye. Beatty, aye. Thomas, aye. Um, 28 Baron Drive Certificate of Compliance, um, same situation, make a motion to issue a partial certificate of compliance for 28 Baron Drive, uh, noting um, perpetual conditions uh, number uh, special conditions number one, number 49, number 50, and number 51 um, in the order of conditions. Beatty, a second. Uh, call, uh, roll call vote. Call Fells aye. Lundin aye. Beatty, aye. Thomas, aye. Thank you. Uh, 12 Forest Edge Road. Um, I know the applicant is here on this one, Antonio. Yes, Tony, I'm bringing you up to panelists. So you're allowed to talk and be seen. So um, this, this was um, originally a enforcement um, order that um, uh, for the applicant then uh, submitted a notice of intent to uh, uh, repair the, uh, the situation. Um, and as part of that, um, NOI also proposed a um, small circular patio um, in his lawn uh, for um, chairs in a fire pit um, that has been constructed. Um, so um, Andrea, I, I was out at the site over the weekend and uh, saw evidence that the plants were surviving. Um, um, so I didn't inspect all of them, but the ones I did see looked in uh, good condition. The lawn looked in great condition. Um, so everything was stabilized, including uh, that area that we were concerned of over by the stormwater um, um, ditch that's on the, the right side of his driveway, that, that was all stabilized before we were concerned about that. So um, it, it looks um, substantially in compliance. I know there was some discussion about a location of the um, uh, patio, but um, I actually went back and watched the um, original hearing from June of 2019 this afternoon when the issue came up. Um, and confirm that um, it's in its substantially in the location we authorized. Um, so um, I think that we're good to go on this. Any any concerns, Andrea? No um, permanent markers, Tony. At one point you were going to do a split rail fence. Um, did you change your mind on on how you're going to mark the area? Personally, um, as as Rory said, I know you know exactly where the 50 foot. Uh, wetland restoration area is, and it is treated very differently in terms of well mowed lawn, no mowing in the buffer zone. Absolutely. But yeah. we so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so, so I, I was out and I saw the permanent markers. Perfect. Um, so he, he used his, he used rebar with caps on them. 
So, um, and they're quite visible and uh, they're right at, I'm pretty sure it seems to be about the 50 foot mark to me. And, Correct. and uh, there, there's a buffer between his lawn and where that is, um, which is what we had, uh, uh, what we had established. So um, it, it looked good to me. So thank you for your reminder on that. So uh, 12. And in, in full transfer, I just got to put two more markers up that I couldn't get to. I have them, but I just got to go stake them into the ground. And just when, when it was all grown in, I just couldn't get to it. But yeah. now, now that it's clearing out a little with the winter, I can just go in and stake them in. OK. Um, any other questions? Uh, any public comment for 12 Forest Edge Road? Um, make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 12 uh, Forest Edge Road, uh, noting that number five, maintain and follow uh, long practices, uh, number 49, no road salts, and number 50, no dumping in the wetlands. Lundin, second. Um, roll call vote, call fells aye. Lundin, aye. Betty, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay, uh, thank you, Tony, for waiting for us. Yep. All set. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you, Andrea, for the help along the way. Thank you. Appreciate it all. Thank you. Uh, 188 Massapog. Uh, this was a certificate of compliance that came up uh, last meeting, and uh, we had noted some um, material in the, the buffer zone behind the fence. Mm -hmm. um, I know Andrea went out and uh, had a chance to, to see it for herself. Um, I don't without know if anyone else without the snow. Yeah. I only got to see the snow. Um, it appears to have been limited to, to those two things that I saw. Was there anything else in there? No, I think he, um, might be dropping his, his, um, lawn clippings, uh, lawn clippings and other, and other, uh, lawn debris off, uh, the fence line, but that's the fence line is where it's supposed to be. What uh, looked like it might be aluminum siding was really just the fence. Um, it, it's a vinyl fence. Sure. And so it was a piece of the vinyl fence that, um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get a hold of the owner. I have no email or, or phone uh, access to him. He wasn't home when I was there. Um, so the material is still back there. It's otherwise compliant with the, with the um, order. Which is an enforcement order. Was done as after the fact, exactly. So an after the fact NOI on, a, on an enforcement order. Um. And he asked. So it turns out that you can't deny a certificate of compliance. You can only give a partial. And you can say what hasn't been done. Um, the only structure that was requested has been constructed. So, um, um, but but here I had a but, recommendation. But mm -hmm. we can do an enforcement order. Yes. Is that really what he wants? He he wants to go through this again. I, um, I can I can do better than that. We can start issuing fines. So, I think you should whatever you do, you should notify him. In a, in a letter and then he's on notice and he can get and he can bring himself into compliance in that time frame you give him and then you can start your you know bad boy approach yeah I, I i agree with that send him a notification letter give him a time frame of like two weeks if he doesn't comply then you can start issuing whatever you need just uh I, I would say I, I would propose that um, we, we we do that and just tell them we're going to start issuing two hundred dollar a day fines. Rory, if you ever want to move to Sharon, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I um, he's not yeah. moving to Sharon, John. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of friends in Sharon, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> Uh, so, so that's it. Let's just, let's give them a deadline of, um, November 30th. That'll give us a week before the next meeting and, um, and we'll start issuing fines at $200 a day. 
Okay. Until he, be, until he gets into compliance. So I make a motion to issue a partial certificate of compliance with regards to the fence that was installed. Spade a second. Uh, roll call vote, Caulfield's aye. Lundeen, aye. Spadia, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay, uh, the next two are sort of administrative. Um, Just like each other. Yeah. So uh, 111 uh, Washington Street, this is a certificate of compliance for um, work that um, had never been started. And it's not, has no intention of going anywhere. So is the permit, the permit's expired at this point? Permit expired. Okay, so. And that's uh, an option. What's that? That's an option in an, in an order. In yeah. a certificate of compliance, you can say it's expired, therefore. Yeah, yeah. I just, I wanted, before we issued the certificate, I just wanted to know that the permit was expired. Uh, um, any questions from anybody? Public comment? 111 Washington Street, seeing none. Um, I make a motion to uh, issue a certificate of compliance uh, for 111 Washington Street. Stay a second. Yep. Thomas got the second. Uh, got roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundin aye. Spady aye. Thomas aye. Uh, 210 Pequonicut Ave. This is again, um, now I am going to say that this is, the, this, the work was substantially not done. Um, they, they began to dig the foundation hole. Um, I actually have driven by this probably not as many as a thousand times, but maybe 500 times and always wondered um, what was going on with that site. Now I know <laughs> nothing was going on with that site. Hi, we're just getting to- um... oh, you're, you're on, you're, mute, you, mute yourself there. <laughs> yes. Um, That's your executive uh, session person. Ah, yes, we're getting there. Um, and so, no, the work has substantially not been done. There's the remains of a former foundation hole there. He needed to take some action in order to get an extension permit. That was the action. So this is this was extended like once or twice already. So, and it's again expired. It it expired, and a notice of intent is been filed. I think for December seventh, if not for the following week. Okay, so uh, let's close this permit out. Make, make a motion to issue a permit, uh, a certificate of compliance uh, for 210 Pequonicut. Lundin, second. Uh, roll call vote. Call fills aye. Lundin, aye. Beatty, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay, so um, Andrea, the, do, does it make sense to go to the Executive session and come back to this, or can we take the, the, the board discussion and try and condense this into? Please, please do choose to move the board discussion up okay. in the agenda. We that was an error in our our formatting. Okay, so um, so we got minutes um, from September twenty eighth. I didn't uh, hang on. Did I have? I, I didn't have any comments on September 28th. Anybody have anything? Nothing from me. Same. Make a motion to uh, accept the meetings for September 28th as written. Lundin second. Uh, roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundin aye. Beatty aye. Thomas aye. Um, the meeting minutes for October 19th. The only thing was, um, this was the, the meeting that um, Mike came in late. Do, do we add, Mike, do you remember what time that was? It was like 7.05 or something like that? Yeah, it was right around 7. I think 7.05 would be safe to say. So if we could just note that, um, Tish, uh, under the commissioner's present, where it says Mike's, Michael Spady, a vice chair, just in parentheses afterwards, put joined late. 7.05 p.m. or 7 o'clock p.m., whatever you would want to put there. Um, because that, that explains why he didn't vote until 109 Blackbrook. Right. And, and just we just want to remove Andrea's comment 
um, off of the final version. Um, any other comments? None. Okay, make a motion to accept the meeting minutes for October 19th uh, with those uh, two changes. The mics uh, coming in late and uh, removing Andrea's comment. Thomas, second. Roll call vote. Caulfield's aye. Lundin, aye. Beatty, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, I, I just um, asked Carol, um, we've actually got a, a, as we talked about last last time, we've got a, um, a project from the CPC that's actually on the <clears throat> town meeting warrant, special uh, fall town meeting warrant. So I just thought Carol could just give us a little bit of an update. I know there was um, some discussion about the amount and whatnot, if she could just sort of bring us up to speed and how how she perceives everything's going there, so. Sure, thank you, Rory. Um, right, just to review the uh, Conservation Commission um, um, put to the CPC a request for funding for uh, repairs on the Wheaton Farm barn that would bring it back into structural stability. <laughs> so the, um, and the CPC passed it and it's on the town meeting warrant on November 30th, 7 p.m. at Stonehill. Uh, we, the CPC had previously apportioned um, funds to the CONCOM. Um, I don't recall if they were for the Wheaton Farm or not, but- um, It was an earlier barn project. Okay, so 14,000 of that was unused. So the CPC has apportioned that into the 100 $90,000 ask that's on the town meeting warrant. And we expect to receive a memo from the committee confirming that um, recharacterization or whatever it's called. Um, there is no potential land under consideration for acquisition by the CPC. Um, uh, Andrea had wondered how might the updated CPA plan change how the CONCOM presents future applications and the town planner uh, doesn't see any changes at all that would impact us. Um, that's it. So uh, is, is this, I, I know there's been some discussion on the CPC about sort of um, restating their focus. Is that, is that a proper characterization? Well, we've been working to um, update the the plan to um, like how how applicants go about applying mm. and how we look at them. And uh, there's been talk about um, having a CPC liaison uh, for applications that are approved. Um, we're working out the language of that because. Um, you know, we, we need to be careful with the open meeting law, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and yet it may be really helpful communication-wise for a, a liaison to be more in tune than the other um, CPC members to know what's actually happening on the project, if deadlines are getting hit or not, and why. Um, those those kinds of things, some way to sure. to have somebody on the ground involved um you know without responsibility for making things happen on the application but to just know what's going on on the ground yeah and, and guiding them through the process a little bit more you know making sure everybody stays on track because I, I think a lot of times with a lot of these projects what happens is is they all start scrambling three weeks before everything's supposed to happen and so sure yep so. yeah i think i think it could work well if it was if that liaison position was well articulated legally right yep. Here's what the responsibilities are. Here's what the responsibilities are not. So how, how often does the CPC meet once a month? That's that's how frequently we have been meeting. We are gonna take a gap in December um, because the regularly scheduled whatever if Thursday of the month uh, does not fall in a, in a good place right. in December. So we're moving into January at this point. I, I think maybe from, from moving forward, maybe the week the meeting after your meeting, we'll just put you on the agenda to give us a 
little brief 30 second, one minute update, whatever it takes. This was a little bit longer because we've actually got a, a warrant article coming up. So it was worth the time to spend, but I, th I think probably to just get you on the agenda as a regular item, the first meeting after your meeting. So you, we get a little bit of an update of what's going on. Agreed. And who's going to do that? To remember to do that. They're pointing at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured. Um, it's on the agenda. Okay. We'll we'll put it on the agenda. We'll remind you to that you're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay, uh, Andrea. These next ones here. Um, just as a follow up, that the uh, two gifts of land this year for. Um, uh, over at Good Speed Estates and at 348 Foundry are being signed tonight, hopefully, by the select board. Um, they went down for their uh, request. Uh, we might have a new uh, Conservation Commission member by the end of the select board meeting as well. Um, the, uh, the, the group of uh, Boy Scouts that wanted to camp over Thanksgiving Day weekend, um, now they recognize that it they still want to camp, they still want to go, but because of the Baker administration, they're saying they'll they'll leave around eight o'clock and have campfires, but not stay over, not stay past 930. I told them you were fine as long as as long as they followed the restrictions. And so I asked, how large a group is it going to be? Um, because I don't know how he can restrict, you know, scouts who he invites. So um, that was the only question I asked. I assumed that was within what you were looking to do there. Chris Patrick has a, um, a former Eagle Scout who is in between graduating from college and hasn't found his job yet. And so has offered to help. Um, and Chris was saying, you know, can I, can I give him projects to do? One uh, pet project of Chris's is to get QR codes onto our maps by physically putting stickers with the QR code onto our maps. And um, so he could do that. A uh, personal project interest of mine is that the Wheaton Farm um, map doesn't show the trail systems that go over to Sam Wright. And so some people who are, you know, don't realize you can go farther than the map allows. Um, don't go farther than the map allows. <laughs> so I'd like to have the map extended. And then if you remember uh, Wheaton Farm, the, the uh, Eagle Scout project by uh, John Montgomery, which it was building a bridge across a stream behind the Wheaton Farm barn um, for a young child who um, died. They didn't paint it because the family wanted to come and actually do some physical work in memory of their um, of their sibling, but they never did. And they don't live in town. So there's been a blue tarp on it. <coughs> and some people might move the blue tarp in order to use the, the bridge, but others, you know, but it'd be nice if we just painted it without making a big deal about it. So we could remove the blue tarp. Yeah. So, so I think what I, I have a ton of projects, but I think what um, what Chris Patrick would like would be things that Chris could could allow could kind of supervise and have have a responsible young adult go do um, and then come back and report as to how well it happened and, you know, not put him into any harm's way because yeah. he's out by himself. Yeah, we do something like similar like that here in, in Sharon. Uh, we actually have a, a point person that I appoint to reporting to me any sort of issues with trails. And I just let them, you know, take the lead on it. So it works and it frees up my, me or the, for instance, for you, Andrea, I mean, it would free you up for having to really worry about that. And Chris is a associate member, so it makes sense. Yeah, that's why, that's why commission members graduate to become associate members. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm all in favor, Andrew. Okay, so he's he's we're on it. That's it. Okay, um, I think uh, I think that's um, it for this meeting. Um, there there is one other one other comment is that um, 
the Tufts Farm property, um, we are in the process of putting out for a, a request for um, um, response on um, as far as, um, and we are going to probably get some input from the Agricultural Commission on what they're um, talking about, what their thoughts about that property are since it's a farm. Um, Thank you. So I just, I, I just want to tell, we'll probably hear from them at some point in the next couple of meetings to get some feedback from them that we can include into the RFR. So just wanted uh, you to know that. Okay. I remember. Thanks. See, I listened to you, Andrea. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they were, they were available both to help you write the RFR and then to evaluate the proposals. Great. We appreciate that for sure. Um, so um, what we're going to do now is um, we are going to uh, go into executive session, but before we do so, I, I want anybody who's still um, maybe hanging on from a public standpoint, um, we will be adjourning. Um, we are not gonna be returning to the main session. We are gonna adjourn the meeting uh, directly from the uh, executive session. So um, this meeting uh, is going to end. And um, we are, um, so we are, uh, right now we're gonna, um, we have to go to, into executive session, but we have to have a roll call vote to go into executive session. So um, make a motion to go into executive session. Um, um, yes. Just got to remember to adjourn after we do a executive session. Right? We're just uh, yep. adjourning the regular session to get over there. So, uh, and we will be adjourning uh, immediately following the executive session. Yeah, hang on. So I need a second. Oh, Tom, a second, sorry. Uh, roll call vote, Caulfield's aye. Lundin, aye. Beatty, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay, so you got to exit this, restart your Zoom in the other number. Where's the link? In the binder. Um, it's, at the, it's on page, uh, oh boy, what page is it on? Uh, what, what was that the last email we got from you guys? That update on the binder? Yeah, binder, the binder, two. binder two. It's on page 32. Uh, 32. Huh. You guys got it? No. Probably. Yeah, probably. Where is it? End meeting. <laughs> <laughs>